Hello YouTube and welcome back to the channel Outside the Target Demographic. Today I'm going to be showing you one of the first things I do when bringing a new firearm into the fold and that is painting the sights. Let's get started. So something I've learned over the last couple years of firearm ownership is the stock sights on most of the guns I purchase are usually pretty poor. Uh, this one is an extremely poor example. As you can see, we have a very large front sight that's just a black post, and we have a rear sight that is also black. So I'm going to go ahead and close the action here. And what we're attempting to do is put our front sight blade in the middle of the rear notch. And it doesn't help that we have a black firearm with a black rear sight and a black front sight that uh, can easily become confused and difficult to focus on. So what I've learned to do, we're gonna break that open, bit of a safety there. What I've learned to do is to paint the sights. So I'm gonna move this guy to the side and I'm gonna roll in. This is one of my training guns. This is a Taurus TX-22. It's a 22 long rifle, semi-automatic handgun. Uh, as you can see, we are unloaded. The magazine is empty. And if I have light shining through there, you can see there is no magazine and we do not have a uh, loaded chamber here. But what I typically do, and you can already see, it's already drawing your attention in. I put the high visibility orange to the front and the high visibility green to the rear. And you can already see a marked difference between that sight picture versus that sight picture. And if you'll humor me, I'm gonna try and get both of these in at the same time. So even in low light or poor light conditions, I find that the painted sights really draw the, the human eye in. And there's a reason for that. We've all been trained as drivers of motor vehicles that orange traffic cones and orange traffic vests are something that we are constantly looking for. So by putting orange on the front sight, my eye is naturally drawn into it. And then by having a high visibility green to the rear, I'm completing that sight picture with two high visibility colors that are not normally seen in uh, nature. So if I'm hunting or uh, self-defense or just planking target shooting, I'm not likely to be shooting at something high visibility green or high visibility orange. The other benefit to this is I'm going to use my S11 flashlight here. I'm going to set it to the UV light. And I went ahead and searched around on eBay. These were about $1.25 each. Both of these colors will glow in the dark. So by adding them to my sights, these aren't even lit up. This is just the ambient light and they're already a lot easier to pick up again compared to, uh, this is gonna take a while, so let's see. The trick here is to aim your front sight post far above your rear sight and hopefully drop it into the notch. So we're looking at a sight picture right about like that as opposed to that. So to prove that that will continue to be the case even when it's outside of the bottle, uh, UV light charges up glow-in-the-dark stuffs much faster than a regular LED does or an incandescent light bulb. So I'm gonna charge these up for a bit. I'm gonna kill that light. I'm going to kill this light and you can see not only does it glow in the dark, but it maintains its color. 
So unlike tritium sites, or at least the two tritium sites that I have on my firearms, typically you'll just get the same color. It's typically a green for your rear and your front sight. With this paint, you could get it in whatever color you want to. Again, I've explained why I've gone with the um, high vis orange and green, but this is glowing. Granted, you have to charge it with a flashlight first, so this wouldn't be um, a replacement by any means for $150 tritium sights. But for $1.25, you can make all of your guns much easier to use in twilight, brightness, uh, morning, evening, and at night. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and apply paint to the front and the rear sight on these. It's pretty straightforward. You're going to need a base coat of white times two. You're going to use whichever color you prefer. Uh, I did pick up a color of yellow as well. I didn't like it as much. It wasn't as punchy as this is. The camera does not do it justice. And then you finish it up with a coating or two of clear coat. It's, um, it's cheap insurance. So uh, I have the action bent right here. Even if it was cocked and loaded, if the action is open, there's a safety built in where it will not fire. I'm not going to have my finger in the trigger. Um, all that to say, what we're going to be doing is luckily, and I don't know how well it's going to, there we go. The rear sight has a couple of grooves running left, right across it. And the front sight is very, very smooth. Let's see. So the front sight may be a bit tricky, but the paint is easily going to apply on these rear grooves. Now you'll notice too, there's a U notch in the rear sight there. So you have the very prominent uh, let's see what the lighting here. We have a very prominent wall with grooves, and then we have an inlet before we have the U-notch. I'm going to try and do just the top two grooves all the way across. And instead of, this is a three dot sight. You have two to the rear, one to the front. This one was originally plastic black blade and rear sight with a white uh, dot of paint that has been drilled into the site. So it's actually recessed that made filling it with paint very simple. This one's going to be surface level, which is why we're going to go ahead and follow up with a coat of the clear coat. But all that to say, instead of me just putting a dot and a dot and a dot, I'm going to make this a very wide blade, a very wide blade all the way across with a very large front blade. Now, the reason I'm doing that is this is going to be for general plinking and probably used as a trainer for people who have not fired before. So instead of giving someone a handicap by giving them very small dots to focus on, I'm going to be giving them a very large orange upright sight and two very large rear sights so that we can get a uh, gross mechanical action and get that lined up quickly. We're not going for precision in placement of the shots. We're looking to improve the confidence of the shooter in being able to see the sights in the first place and being able to line them up easier. To better explain what you're going to be looking for with your sight picture, I created this absolutely, totally copyrighted, but you can make your own example. It's very difficult to look down the sights at the same time someone else is and explain to them what they're seeing and what they should be seeing. So I designed this uh, example to explain to people what it is that they should be doing. So it's made out of three paper plates. The first one is our target. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking our front sight. And if you line it up with the rim, you should be hitting about center. And then you're going to be taking your rear sights and you're going to be lining them up with it. So your front sight should be dead center of the target and you should be having equal height and equal light with your sight picture. 
So you should have equal height across the rear and your front sight, and you should have equal light in between them. So you should have the same amount of light or distance gap, what have you, in between them. Keep both eyes open, apply pressure to the trigger, do not yank on the trigger, do not pull the trigger. We are applying pressure on the trigger until it fires. And then we are controlling our breath. If that means you need to hold your breath, so be it. If you can control your breath, if you can be aware of as you're exhaling, releasing the trigger, that's fine. Be cognizant of your breathing. Another benefit to this is since it's not stapled together and I can set it up however I want to, I can then run hypotheticals. If I'm seeing this, where is my shot going to hit on this target? It's going to be hitting somewhere in this area because the front of my gun is pointing up. So if this is pointing at my target, I'm actually angled up a little bit, which is going to make me hit a little high. All right, so another hypothetical. If I'm set up like this, where is my sight going to be or my shots going to be hitting? We're going to be hitting way over here because my gun is going to be sitting at a very prominent angle. Now, this may seem excessive, but consider if these were originally black with white and I set it up like that, you could very easily, especially in low light situations, consider that you have your three dots lined up, which technically you do, but you didn't have them in the right order. So you could see this as your three dots, one, two, three, lined up with equal height and equal light, and your shots are going to be incredibly off. Uh, these two guns are maybe not the best example of that, but I have several that the rear sight and front sight are about the same size with the same diameter dot that are the same color and it's very easy to accidentally rearrange and reorientate those so this is a fantastic uh, hypothetical trainer that i came up with again feel free to make your own so as these sites are not white dot sites and we're going to be doing large amounts of painting here, what I'm going to do is tape it off. So we have those grooves, which is going to make painting the rear sight much easier. It's going to give me a surface that's already roughed up that the paint can just seep right into. And we're going to go all the way across here. My concern becomes the front sight. So it is very smooth. And while I could rough that up with spray paint or something, we're not going to be doing that. Notice I'm not putting my hands in front of the muzzle, only in front of the sight there. Uh, I have the tape maybe about halfway up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to confirm that if I look through the rear sight, beautiful, I can see just enough of the front sight but I don't see any of the blue tape in it when I have the proper sight picture. Now what that means is instead of having a giant sight with a shallow notch, I'm going to try and get the paint only as much as the notch is going to be filled with the front sight, if that makes sense. So as high as that little notch is I want just the amount of sight for the equal height, equal light to be showing as orange. The rest of it I don't want because that will confuse you and you'll maybe want to do this. And that's going to give you shots hitting very high because your muzzle is now pointing up. If I don't like it, it's going to be far easier for me to repaint it than to try and cut and scrape only the bottom part off without uh, compromising the integrity of the top part there. So I want to make sure that that tape is nice and in place, which it is for both. 
We're going to start with a coat of white on both of these. We'll probably follow up with the second coat depending on how well it adheres. And then we're going to go ahead and do again, I choose all of my guns are set up the same way. I have orange to the front, green to the rear, which means if I pick up, that's the cuckoo clock, everyone should have one. That means if I pick up this one, if I pick up this one, if I pick up my rifles, my shotguns, they will all have the same color setup and it will make this guy being a learner more skills or transfer transfer over more quickly because they are set up in the same manner. So let's go ahead and get started with painting the front and rear sight. So I've applied the first coat of white base paint and it's already a marked improvement. Much easier to see. Let's focus on the rear sight here. Much better. So <clears throat> what I'm seeing with these sights is the front one took pretty well. The rear one, again, those grooves are going to assist me. Uh, gives me a great surface to adhere to. The thing I am noticing is this block right here. Focus. Come on. Right here. So what this firearm is set up for is you can adjust both your windage and your elevation. And what that means is your windage is going to be shifting the sight left, right, and your elevation is going to be adjusting the height of that sight. So by turning this screw, I can adjust the left, right, and by adjusting this screw, I can adjust the height. Now you'll notice right here, come on, baby. I asked so little of you. Right here are a series of notches and there is an arrow. So what this allows you to do is as we zero this firearm and zeroing is seeing where the projectiles land and setting up the sights to reflect that. Uh, so if I'm hitting here, I'm going to adjust the sight so that I am now pointing the firearm where the point of impact is. Those notches will allow me to know how far left or right I need to move the sights in order to get my zero. The problem with that is this entire block. So from... <laughs> This raised portion to this raised portion is a piece of plastic that I don't know why well, this is going to reflect on video, but as I move that, you can see the arrow is moving towards my screwdriver. So I've moved it about two notches over to the right. What that means is every time this block is moved, the two remaining black portions, uh, let's see if we can get some better lighting here. Focus. The two remaining black portions on the rear sight are part of the rear surface of this block. So every time I move it, I'm gonna be scratching that paint off which is not what we want with a rear sight. Come on. So unfortunately, the sight picture isn't gonna be perfect. We're going to have green to the rear, green to the rear, orange to the front, and we're gonna have what looks to be a black spot in between it. There's really no way around that. Now what I can do is once I zero this, I can lock it down, make sure those screws aren't moving anywhere, I can go ahead and fill in those black spots and paint them with green paint so that it looks a little more continuous, a little more contiguous back there. Uh, we will see what we will be doing with that. But another benefit to this uh, pellet 
pistol. And one of the reasons I got it is it has a Picatinny rail already mounted to the top. So you can see there are cuts here and then you have a length of rail running across the receiver, as it were. Uh, I will probably be dropping a red dot sight on this guy. And that's going to remove the whole equation of lining up your three individual sites. Again, taking into account how they're lined up to the target. And with a red dot, all I have to do is look through the glass, almost like a scope. In the middle of that scope, uh, let's do this. Haha. -ha. So as long as I'm looking through the middle of my scope, there's going to be a little red dot. And as long as I put that little red dot in the middle of my target and again, control my trigger press so I'm not snapping the gun, I will more likely than not be hitting where I tell that red dot to point because I will also be zeroing if I am hitting here and my red dot is there, I'm going to move my red dot to the point of impact. That will make handling this firearm much simpler for people who have not shot before. It can easily be unscrewed and removed, and then I can train people on the irons. So for $50, this, this, I'm, I'm really excited about this. This is going to be really cool. This is going to be a great little starter gun, a great little plinking gun. Uh, pellets will cost you like half a cent per round, something like that. Ridiculously cheap. Fantastic trainer. Uh, I have heard that the trigger on this is just god-awful terrible, which is also fantastic. The more difficult the trigger is, if you can master that, you can master any other trigger. The lighter it is, the smoother it is, the easier it's going to be. So starting out with something a little harder is going to be actually a benefit. But we are going to try and do a trigger job to this. We are going to try and smooth it out as best we can and make it a little more useful for some first timers. So now I have two coats of my sight paint. The orange is quite prominent on the green background, on different uh, camo colors. So different colors you're going to see out as you're shooting or hunting. And then we have our high-vis green, which unfortunately, uh, due to the angle of the light here, is going to be as pronounced, but that works right there. So very high vis green, even on a relatively darker green background like grass or what have you, still stands out. I'm going to try and, yeah, let's simplify things. And if I can get it to focus down here on the front sight. So uh, a lot higher visibility, uh, much easier to find and remove the sight alignment as uh, part of the equation, simplify it anyways, so you can focus on your target, what's beyond it, and get shots on target. Um, so we do have two coats of the glow-in-the-dark paint. I will go ahead and roll in some footage now. There is snow outside, so we have a couple of different lighting conditions and uh, the white and black uh, environment will help with the high contrast of the sights. So I'm going to roll in those videos now and you'll see what type of a difference you can expect when you're out and about. With the high vis, I mean, even going through a camera, I was able to line those up very quickly. Very easy to see, very high contrast, easy to line up, easy to get that sight picture. There we go, come on, nice. So this is a dark room with a dark carpet and I do have a window off to the left, which is why you can still see my hand and all, but even a black gun on a black carpet and dim lighting, those sights absolutely pop.
And these are the same sights after I just recharged them with the flashlight. So I'm going to go ahead and you can see there's no light getting in my hand. But we have my two green rears. And we have the glow-in-the-dark orange front. So the last step we have, we did the white, we did the orange, we did the green. The last step is to go ahead and clear coat everything. And that's going to do a couple things. One, we're only adhering on the one surface. So if I can clear coat around the paint, it's gonna make it less likely to chip off. Uh, you can see here, it is a lot more pronounced than the rest of the black. So it's gonna be more likely to, especially being holstered and unholstered, being scraped off, bumped around in a bag, uh, general wear and tear of transporting and handling a firearm. So now that we've gone through the work of painting it, we're gonna go ahead and clear coat it, laminate it in, and that's going to make it last longer and be less susceptible to dings and damage and all. Okay, so here we are with the first coating of the clear coat. And I want to make sure to point out, you can see a little bit of uh, what we'll call slop on the side there, focus. I have done that on all sides, uh, including underneath it, which won't show up quite so well. Uh, again, the idea here is to seal it in, but also protect it from the environment it's going to be in. So the benefit here is, uh, should you intentionally or unintentionally go ahead and coat across or further along the sides, you're actually going to be doing um, more good for it. You're going to be protecting it even better. The second benefit to using a clear coat is this isn't going to get dirty as quick um, as this is high visibility and acrylic nail polish. It is going to attract and hold dirt and dust and uh, debris a lot uh, better than the standard finish. So by clear coating it, we're going to give it a nice smooth surface that should negate any of those uh, concerns. And the final one I can think of is when you apply it, uh, this stuff has gotten a little congealed as it's gotten older. I've had these for about three or four years now. As I said, I do this with all my firearms. By putting a clear coat on it, any imperfections of the paint application is going to be minimized because you're putting a clear coat over it that itself is going to run a little smoother and it's going to um, level itself out as it dries. So while that may sound a little OCD, and I assure you it is, the point of the sights is you're going to be staring at them intensely for minutes, hours, a day, and any imperfections that are on there will be noticed in a very short period of time. So OCD, yes, I will grant you that. But also, uh, it is going to smooth out any of those imperfections, make it look a little bit better. But that's about what we got. We're going to go ahead and let those dry. And I will roll in um, the next clip of the completed sights. So here we have the sights. They had been painted, but I put the black electrical tape over it to give you an idea of what the stock ones would have looked like. Basically, again, the premise is you'd point your sight up and slowly lower, lower it into the notch. But um, especially with a black and white background with it actively snowing right now, it's very difficult to see those sights. So now I take the electrical tape off of them. Look at how much higher contrast that is, how much easier it is to know not only your front from your rear, but get them lined up and get that proper sight picture. Those sights just pop. It's currently 510 during the winter up here in Ohio. So uh, the camera is not really showing how dark it is outside where we have maybe 30, 40 minutes of sunshine. Well, uh, before sunset anyways. But those sights just pop. 
and it's much easier to look at, say, that branch, keep the focus on that branch, and just put your sights in line with it. While we are here and we have the paint already out, this firearm has what's called a manual safety. So you can see we have S and F. No, you can't see. Now you can. S and F, safe and fire. It is currently in the fire position. Now again, my finger is not on the trigger and the action is open, which will activate a safety, but I am showing you that we have a safe and a fire function. So typically you will set it to safe and that will, you're gonna watch me put my finger in the trigger, that will prevent the trigger from moving at all. It is called a trigger block safety. When I flip this down, the trigger will be activated if I apply pressure on it, the firearm, again, if the action were closed and it were pumped and it had a pellet in it and I applied the proper amount of pressure on that trigger, will go off. Why I'm pointing that out is I kind of had to get the camera to focus and the proper lighting for us to see that. I don't really care for that. So something I have done on most of my firearms is I paint the S white and I paint the F red because white is safe and red is hot. Red is ready to fire. Red is I'm going to be destroying whatever I'm pointing this at. So I'm going to go ahead and use my white paint. I'm going to go ahead and paint the S and the F. Both of them I'm going to paint white and then the F I'm going to follow up with some red nail polish on top of it and that will give us our red color. If I put red on black, it's not gonna show up as well. If I give it a base coat of white, just like I'm giving a base coat for these and then follow up with red, it's going to be much more prominent and give us a more positive indication of the condition of the firearm. So basically, since both of those letters are pressed into the metal, that's the dog, everyone should have one. I'm just gonna go ahead and blot it with the white paint. You can see that it's already filled it in. I'm giving it eh, maybe 20, 30 seconds. And then I'm just gonna use a paper towel to wipe off the excess. If that's not good enough, I'm gonna follow up with some rubbing alcohol. Do not use nail polish remover that will strip the finish off of your metal and damage your firearm. So use rubbing alcohol and use elbow grease. All right, so we have our much more prominent safe and fire positions. Beautiful. Now what we're gonna do is follow up on the F with some red. It's really gonna pop, but you can see even in not great lighting, that's so much easier to see. We now have our white safe and our red F, which will help us know the condition of our firearm. 